how are you? Welcome so much. Thanks for joining us. Um, you may be watching us on YouTube. And so just so you know, this is a show that emanates from the Chicagoland area. Because uh, we have people that watch this on YouTube in India and around the country, around the world. And uh, that is why, uh, that's why I want to let you know. This is a TV show. That's why when you go on YouTube channel, you'll see uh, 55 or so different episodes. Uh, and that's why that is. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Now, this is kind of a treat for me. We haven't done a show for a number of weeks, uh, but because of what's going on with the coronavirus. Now, I don't know when you see this, because this show is going to air about two or three weeks down the road. And uh, only God knows where we'll be at that time. And I'm praying that things are getting back to normal by then. So when you're watching this, who knows where we'll be. But uh, it, right now, we're at the apex, you know, and uh, we're hoping it turns the corner. And a uh, matter of fact, I just did a video on this. So if you want to, if you uh, go to my YouTube channel, Stephen Sage, Stephen with a PH, and you'll, you'll see a video that I did called uh, uh, Coronavirus, Is It From God? And I, I, I was compelled to make a video about it because I see so much stuff on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube and or uh, Facebook. People are going, this is the judgment of God happened, the judgment of God, that's what all this is. And I addressed that issue, and you may be surprised what I had to say about it. It's about a 30-minute issue, uh, 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 but I touch on a number of subjects, and if you get a chance, go there and watch it. If you're interested about, about this, what's going on, and whether it's from God or not. Um, please, if you, if you have a YouTube channel, would you subscribe to me? I, don't, I think you have to have a channel, Bobby, do you, to, to subscribe? Yeah, yeah, would you subscribe? We need as much, uh, we need as much airplay and, and, and play as we can get. Uh, you can go to Facebook, The Apologist. And please come on there and jump and knock in. Uh, give me a tap and I'll let you in. And uh, it's a group of a, a, a number of us that come together and you can pull post prayer requests and memes and stuff like that. It is theologically centered, so you know. And you can also send me an email if you, have, if you have a question, a comment about this show, anything I say, or you want to get in touch with me, go to sage725 at yahoo. Send me an email. Uh, and so the, you know about that. If you listen, if you watch the show, and I've said this all many times, if you yeah, if you send me a question or a comment, I'll send you a CD. Okay, uh, free of charge, my gift to you. If you need a Bible, contact me. We live in America. There's no reason you don't have a Bible unless you don't want one. Uh, but if you want one, I'm gonna I'll I'll send you one for free. And even if you want it in Spanish or if you have another language. Uh, I will get it for you and send it to you, okay? If you, if you don't have one and you'd like one, uh, don't go without. I will help you and I'll send it to you. Um, and so that's what I want to say about that. Uh, be, hey, before you send me, uh, uh, as people flip through the TV station, someone's going to see this, go, oh, look at this guy. I'm going I'm to send him a, I'm going to send him something, you know. Uh, let me tell you something. See this? Blue lives matter. Blue lives matter. White lives matter. Black lives matter. Uh, green, yellow, brown lives matter. Uh, gay lives matter. Straight lives matter. Uh, all lives matter. That's why Jesus died. Okay? Uh, man, I hope you, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into this too much because I can talk about this for three hours and I'm not going to get into it. All lives matter. And I have respect for policemen, especially right now, policemen, firemen, nurses, doctors. Pray for those who are first responders or are right there on the front lines. You know, they, these people are putting their lives on the line daily. Please pray for them. Um, uh, here, where we're at in Evergreen Park, uh, businesses are closed up and down 95th Street. Uh, uh, one b business I'm very familiar with, you'll see him at the very end of, uh, there's, there are credits at the end with uh, uh, Red Wing and also with uh, 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 Nissan of South Holland. Uh, at the Evergreen store, close the showroom down. Uh, if you want to get something, you got to call up. And uh, the, if you come to the front door, there's the phone numbers on the door, call us, we're inside. But we lock the front door for a reason. Legally, we can be open. Legally, this store can be open. We supply first responders. We supply people in construction, waste management, those people who are, not ex who are uh, exempt from being sheltered. And so, uh, but the fact is, the, uh, the owner of this place, he wants to be part of the solution and not the problem. And he has chosen to lock that front door and you can still get some calling on the phone and you ha can have it shipped to you or you can come pick it up curbside. But I I I'm very uh, uh, honored by what he's done. I'm, uh, I, my hat is off to him. 
and I don't take that off too much. Look, at, I got no hair. I don't take it off too much. The fact is, is that he, uh, business, uh, his business is down probably 98%, and yet he's doing something, a choice he is making to try and contribute to the solution. Uh, same thing with uh, some car dealerships. Uh, I was out at the Nissan of South Holland, and you, they're open. You got to call, make an appointment, uh, just to go in. Okay, if you just want to go in the showroom, you got to call, make an appointment. They'll be happy to make an appointment. You can go right in for servicing. You got to call, make an appointment. But they're still open. You know, people need their automobiles. It's an essential thing. I find it kind of amazing. You know, and I, you know, if you know me, I, I got to point out hypocrisy or stuff that I got to scratch my head about. You know, uh, uh, liquor stores are open. Uh, you got binnies. There's a binnies, and people are lined up around the block to get in there because you know, they're only letting 25 people in at a time. But binnies is open. Uh, you can go get recreational marijuana. I would understand maybe medicinal marijuana, but you can go get recreational marijuana. You can get that. And yet, you know, 99% of all other businesses are closed. You know, and I'm, I'm shooting from the hip with that estimate. I don't know. But you can't go get a haircut. Barbershops are supposed to be closed. Uh, you can't even, in some places, I, and I think it's a couple other states, you can't go in and buy an American flag or get some seeds to go out and plant in, a gar your, plant, plant in your garden. But you can go buy booze and go buy, you know, weed. And I don't care, I don't care if you drink, I don't care if you buy weed, that's up to you. But I'm seeing this double standard. It makes me kind of wonder, is the alcohol and the, and the recreational marijuana because of the tax it brings in? You know, I, it's, I'm really saddened how I've gotten so leery of politicians and what goes on so, as I've gotten older, and for good reason. Man, so, uh, and, and, and so you can go out to car dealers, you can go out to see those people at Nissan, and while well, I'm thinking of it, hello Tim, and uh, hello Zach, and hello Tom, hello Liz, uh, people that I really uh, have a lot of respect and admire, uh, just a tight-knit family, the Sappenfields. So I want to say hi to them. They have been a real blessing to me. Uh, so that stuff's going on with that. So you need a Bible, uh, businesses, uh, police lives matter, all that jazz. And don't forget, a coronavirus, if you're wondering about it, is it from God? You can go to my YouTube channel. Uh, so, you know, and so that's what's going on with that. We have been talking about, is there anything else I want to talk about? I think that's it. Uh, we've been, this is a basic theology series we're doing. We've been on over a year, and we're going through all the different things that encompass basic theology. We went through the Trinity, and we went through salvation, all those different things. And we've been talking about angels, okay? And uh, if you, you can go back just a few episodes. If you go to my YouTube channel, all these episodes are numbered. You can go back and see them, and you can find out where we, where we left off at. Now, uh, I'll just recap briefly. And that is that angels are supernatural beings. Uh, they are not human beings uh, who, uh, who once died and are now hovering around. There's a lot of people that believe that. It's not biblical. You've got to remember, what I'm teaching and what I'm sharing comes out of 66, Bible, 66 books of the Bible that I have, 1,189 chapters and uh, uh, 37,731 words and uh, that kind of stuff. Okay, so 66 books of the Bible that I use, that's what I use to teach. So you may, find, you may find something you're taught that doesn't agree with mine and it, what I teach, and it may be because you belong to a denomination in Christianity or something that use, adds other books to the Bible. We call them the books of the Apocrypha at the end. And uh, we'll get into that when we discuss the Bible itself coming up in, in a few weeks. Uh, so angels, and as I mentioned before, uh, angels are uh, really what that word means is messenger. So if I, you know, if, I, if, I, if I go somewhere to bring a message to somebody, I'm actually acting as an angel. Angel is not really a description of what they are. It's a description of what they do. And so that's what angels are. They are messengers, the Greek word uh, angelos, okay? And there's a Hebrew word, uh, malak, which uh, was used during the Old Testament times uh, that had to do with angels, the supernatural beings. They use a different word. There's a different word in the Hebrew that's used today uh, to describe the difference between an angelic being and a, a human messenger. But that's what angels are. And we've, we've already discussed a number of things about angels. I can't go back and recap all of it. But they are spirit beings. They don't have flesh and bones. And you find that out from Luke 24 as Jesus talks about them after his resurrection when they don't believe that's really him. And he says, come, come, put your hand in my side. You know, look at the moons. 
he said angels, you know, because uh, they thought he was an angel, you know, an apparition. And he says, I'm not an angel. Angels do not, angels don't have flesh and bones. And so they are spirit beings. They are incorporeal. They don't have a physical body per se. Uh, they do appear sometimes as humans. God has allowed them, as a matter of fact, you know, instigated that they appear and that they're visible and they take on the form of a man. I say a man because nowhere in Scripture does it say that angels are of the feminine gender, okay? Uh, just like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, uh, masculine pronouns are used. Now, now, God is not a human being. G you know, the Holy Spirit is not a human being. Jesus is it does have a resurrected body because Jesus, who is God, did walk on the earth and have a human body. He, he, he was resurrected in his human body. Uh, matter of fact, we just got through with Easter. Christo anesti, if you're Greek and you're out there. That's one of the few Greek, <laughs> Greek phrases I know. He is risen. Uh, the fact is, is that, um, uh, but masculine pronouns are used for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are masculine in their physical, in their, uh, what's, what, 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 what word could I use? In their uh, inherent being. Masculine in the sense that they uh, identify as man, as man, as, as male. Now, why do I say that? Because there are those who, of course, especially some feminists and others, uh, who want to always say she, she. They want it because they feel like they're getting dissed. Why has God got to be a man or a male? But the fact is, because that is what's in Scripture. Now, so you have angels, they're messengers, and, uh, and, and that's what they do. They deliver messages, they carry out the, the plans of God, they carry out other things, and they do it all for God. Uh, now, as what, I, what I'm going to do here is show you some things. Whoops, I didn't bring that with me, did I? Gosh, darn it, I always forget something. Yeah, pray for me, I'm having a really hard time lately. It's pretty unbelievable. Uh, so, what I'm going to show you here is that uh, they are not glorified human beings. And uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 3, you'll find that explained. It says that we will judge angels, talking about those of us who are believers. And Hebrews 1, 14 says they are ministering spirits. So they're not humans. Uh, there's a lot of people that think that when you die, you become an angel, or you may roam around as a ghost. That is not biblical at all. Luke 16 will explain that. Uh, they, uh, they possess more than human knowledge, but are not om om omniscient. They know more than us, us because they, they, can, they view things. That's why demons, when we, talk, when we get into talking about demons, fallen angels, uh, that's why you may go to a medium or go to one of those seances and they're gonna and you will go and pay 20 bucks or 50 bucks, whatever it is, and they're gonna because you wanna you wanna call up and you wanna talk to you know Aunt Edna. And all of a sudden, the medium starts speaking, and, and out of her mouth, will, or his mouth, will come all this information that, that you, the person, knows. Nobody would know that but Aunt Edna. So therefore, it must be Aunt Edna. No, those are familiar spirits. Mm -hmm. They are demons who know intricate things about lies, and they mislead and deceive people. Uh, so they have, they, they, are, they have possessed more than human knowledge, and uh, you'll find that in 2 Samuel 14 and also ver chapter 19. In Matthew 24, it says that uh, it talks about even angels don't know the day that the Lord will return. So they don't have all knowledge, do they? In 1 Peter 1.12, it talks about angels. They long to look into this salvation thing that's offered to humans. Okay, so they, they have a, a advanced knowledge and they have a lot of knowledge, okay? Uh, but they are not uh, omniscient like God is. Uh, they are stronger than men. We know that, but they're not omnipotent, okay? They have great strength. Uh, in Psalm 103, it says that they are mighty in strength. In uh, 2 Peter 2, it says that they are great in, in, in might and power. Uh, and also in 2 Thessalonians 1, 2, it talks about mighty angels that come in flaming fire. So the fact is that those are some of the characteristics of angels, and we'll talk about some more of those things. They are not omnipresent either, okay? They can only be at one place at a time. Uh, in Daniel 10, 12 through 14, you have Gabriel who tells a story. The fact is that he gets blocked. Who's bringing Daniel? He gets, he gets kind of, uh, has a little ruckus and run in there, and he has a hard time getting, a, a hard time, it took a while longer than it should have, getting this message to Daniel. Okay? So he had to travel from point A to point B. Angels travel, and, and to some of them, it's at just absolutely phenomenal speeds. It's unbelievable. Matter of fact, if you, we'll talk about some of the angels that have, that have actually, like, 
uh, multiple wheels under them when John sees them. And also, is Ezekiel, I think, this talks about? Sees them, yeah, yeah. And they can do this and turn it and on, a, on, a, on a, a dime and just take off in another direction. It's, it's a phenomenal thing to read. I'm looking forward to getting to heaven to see it. Maybe God will let me see it before then. Man, praise God. I could use, I could use something, some uplifting thing right now. Uh, so at, at times they are enabled to perform miracles. That happens. Uh, in, in Genesis 19, uh, you have um, two angels who, came, who appeared as men, and they go and talk to Lot and them in Sodom. And there are some very evil men in the town who come, and they want to force themselves upon these visitors. And the angels blind them. They get blinded. That's a miracle to blind them. It's a miracle to bring sight to somebody. It's, another, it's also a miracle to do this. Boom, and you're blinded. And so uh, they are able to perform miracles when God allows them. And that brings up an interesting point we'll talk about again when we get, through the, when we get into this lesson here about Lucifer. Uh, the, can he do supernatural things? I really prefer, it's, it's kind of hard to, to uh, uh, say definitively. I would rather call Lucifer, Satan, or the devil as being able to do supernormal things. Okay? And we'll get into that more deeply as we get on. Because supernatural thing, when you say supernatural, it, it, uh, it, it, it has the inherent meaning that you intercede in nature and defy it. You know, uh, remember God was able to make the, the sun stand still momentarily, remember? And that's a supernatural thing. Uh, but the devil can do supernormal things. Whether he can do supernatural things, I don't know. Now, he is given permission to do certain miracles uh, that, that appear as miracles when we get down towards the tribulation period and things start to happen. Uh, but basically, he's just a, a very, very great magi magician. Very great magician. And you can imagine, we, you see magicians do stuff today that just blows your mind. Well, imagine a, a very powerful uh, spiritual being. If he dabbled in that kind of stuff, what he could possibly do. So, uh, and there are ranks among angels, both good angels and evil angels. They are also highly organized. Col uh, Colossians 1.16 will tell you that. You know, where Jesus, he created all things. Jesus created angels. And uh, the fact is, is that um, there is organization within the ranks of not only good angels, but also evil angels, demons. There's also organization, princes, I mean, uh, powers and th thrones, principalities is how the Bible describes them. So in that regards, there, those things exist too, as well with angels. They have a number of ministries. Number of ministries. I'm sorry about that, but I forgot my little goofy pin. You know, something so insignificant, but I forgot my pin. Uh, ministry of angels in relation to God. They praise him. They worship him. They rejoice in his works. They serve him. They appear before him. They are, they are instruments of his judgment. Uh, they are active in, in each new epoch of time that comes along. Uh, they were there when the earth was created. In, in Job 38, it says that they sang and rejoiced when God created the, the, the world, you know, as far as the earth and the heavens. Uh, they were there, and they rejoiced when they, when, they saw, when they saw God do it. Job 38, 6, and 7 would be the evidence for that. Uh, they, they, were, uh, they were used by God in giving the Mosaic Law to Moses. In Galatians 3, it tells that in Hebrews 2. They, the, they were there for the first advent of Christ when he first came at the Incarnation. They were there, remember? They announced the coming of the child. Uh, they were there during the early years of the church, if you remember. One angel busted Paul out of prison. Uh, did another angel bust Peter out? Yes, another, uh, an angel busted Peter out. Maybe I'm thinking of Peter. And uh, the fact is, busted him out of prison. You saw angels in, the, in that first uh, century that were used. They're also going to be present at the second coming of Christ. Christ is going to come with, the, you know, with thousands upon thousands of angels. And so you're going to see stuff like that happening. Other activities that you're going to see angels in, uh, they, watch over, rule, they watch over rulers and nations. Uh, Daniel 4.17, you'll find that. You know, it talks about the, the angel who was the prince that was over Persia. And so you, there are, we believe that there are angels who are actually, especially good angels, who are assigned to watch over certain nations and areas, as I'm sure there are also demonic uh, fallen angels. They influence human leaders. In Daniel 10 and 11, you'll see that. 
They administer God's judgment during the tribulation. That's a seven-year period that's going to happen after, after the rapture happens. And I take off, and my, and my Nissan just keeps driving down the road. I, I, I pray it doesn't get crashed up. Uh, the fact is that they also, uh, during the tribulation period, they are going to they open the seals, they blow the trumpets, they, they, the horns, and all that jazz. And the fact is, in Revelation 8, 9, and 16, you'll see that happening. Uh, they will also announce impending judgments. you find that in Genesis 19, Revelation 14, Revelation 19. They will also inflict judgment on the unrighteous. You'll see that in Acts 12 and also Revelation 16.1. So now I'm trying to give you a quick overview here of what exactly angels do. And what we'll start to touch about next week and stuff is we'll talk about cherubim and seraphim. These are different classes of angels. We'll also talk about Michael and Gabriel and Lucifer. And so it'll get, it gets more and more interesting as we get along. Uh, uh, some of the things that angels finally do, they, they bring answer to prayers. In Acts 12, you see an answer to prayer. We also just mentioned also about how Gabriel brings that answer to prayer for Daniel. I think it was an interpretation of a, uh, uh, of a, uh, a dream. Uh, they also aid in winning people to Christ, Acts 8 and Acts 10. They observe Christian order and work and suffering, 1 Corinthians 4 and 11, Ephesians 3, 1 Peter 1. They encourage in times of danger, or maybe at times someone is low and in, in a depressed state in the scripture, they will come and bring encouragement. They also care for the righteous at time of death. In Luke 16, you'll find that. Uh, <clears throat> you'll find that happening. And Luke 16 is very important because you see in there, because we just talked about some people think if someone dies and then they come back as an angel to watch over their loved one or whatever. Luke 16 says that is not true. Now, I'm using, I'm using 66 books of the Bible. You may not agree with me. That's okay. Don't get mad. Don't get mad and turn the TV off. Listen, are you searching for truth? If you are, then you want to do a scholarly search and that means examine all the, different, all the different sides of an argument and all of the evidence. And then once you've done that, then you can formulate your view based on the evidence. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Everybody is not entitled to their own facts. Okay? So those are important things. So if you don't agree with what I'm saying, let this be an encouragement to you to find out why it is you believe something, in case you don't really know. You know, I have one of my writings, one of my little pamphlets, it's called Know What You Believe and Why. It's important to know why you believe something. It's amazing how many people I talk to who belong to different sects of Christianity, or for that matter, some, some world religion that's not Christian, and when they want to engage me, I find they really don't know why they believe something. But some guy behind a pulpit or somebody else, someone told them, some leader or authority told them, and so they believe it. Well, that's not, that, that, listen, that's, that's a disingenuous, that's disingenuous. You know, uh, when you stand before the Almighty God on Judgment Day, you give an account for what you believe. You can't, you know, if, you, if everything you've been believing is totally wrong, when, it, when you die and come before God and, and you find out, gee, I was believing the wrong stuff, you, you, uh, it's not going to be a viable excuse for you to say, yeah, but, but you know, so-and-so told me, told me this, okay? No, that doesn't work. You are accountable. I mean, that wouldn't work with the police, you know? If, uh, you know, how many times you see someone, these ain't my, the drugs are in my pants. That's not my pants. <laughs> you know, I have one time, I, I cracked people up. We're watching the cops or something, and you hear that so much. Well, these ain't my pants, you know, but I'm wearing them. You know, or, or like, like this, it wasn't my, I found this in your, yeah, it's not my underwear. <laughs> how come you're wearing it, man? It, preposterous stuff. You need to give an account. Okay, so this is why I'm encouraging you. If you don't believe what I'm saying as I'm sharing stuff and giving documentation from Scripture, then you should want to dig a little deeper because you want to know. You want to know why you believe something. Because there's got, you know, I, I told a story when I'm at Guitar Center buying guitar strings and I said to the kid at the cashier, hey, what do you think about this whole thing about God? What do you think about it? Oh, I don't believe him or the Bible. I don't believe in it. Well, why not? Because the Bible doesn't say anything about dinosaurs. Well, wait a minute, man. You know, you see, now he was told something. He's never even read the Bible. I talked to him. Did you look it up? No, I didn't look it up. Someone told him. I said, look it, look it. You're, 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 you're taking this position and now share, you, you shared it with me because I, I prompted you by asking a question, but I bet you've told other people that. I said, and you've never even investigated it. Guess what? On day six, God made land animals, okay? You can go down to the museum of, is it museum of uh, natural history 
And see, Sue is, you know, the big dinosaur, Sue. I think she's still down there. But we know dinosaurs existed because we've dug up bones from countless amounts of dinosaurs, okay? On day six, God created uh, land animals. Therefore, it's axiomatic. God created dinosaurs. Now, the Bible does talk about big behemoths that have tails that really don't describe any other animal except certain types of dinosaurs and stuff. But uh, that's, uh, so he believes something that's not true. And he's basing it on the Bible. And the fact is, he's never verified it in Scripture at all. So you want to be, I mean, you want to be smart. If you're going to, if you're going to, if you believe in God and you, and your trust and you believe that you're going to stand before him someday, you want to know why it is you believe something, okay? All right, angels, after the resurrection period, what do angels, some angels do? Uh, they, uh, for, well, after the resur uh, before the res just before, uh, after the resurrection, remember, they laid Jesus in Joseph's tomb. Uh, they, the angels rolled the stone from the tomb. In Matthew 28, it says. Uh, you ever been to, uh, been to Jerusalem and you see uh, 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 this, uh, the tomb with this gigantic stone? Man, that thing stands like this tall. It's like this thick, solid rock. And it would probably take six or seven human men, maybe, to, and I, I don't know, I'm guessing at that, uh, to roll that thing. And, and these angels rolled the stone from the tomb. They also announced uh, his resurrection to women on Easter morning. Uh, remember, the women go to the tomb, and the tomb is empty, and they announce, he's not here, he's risen. And the women go scurrying back to try and tell the, tell the apostles. In Matthew 28 and also Luke 24, you'll see that the angels announce his, his, uh, his uh, resurrection. The angels were present at his ascension in Acts chapter 1. You'll find it there in verses 10 through 11. You will find it there. So what I'm doing here is showing you some of the duties, some of the, uh, some of the things that, the, that angels do. They are ministering spirits. It, it says, it talks about in Hebrews 1.14, they are ministering spirits to those of us who will inherit salvation. God uses them, you know, in our lives to, to, and uh, and they also do things for God. They go and announce judgments. They carry out judgments. They do all, just a whole gamut of things. And it's all contained in Scripture. We're getting ready to come to a close now. I want to thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate the fact that you come in. Many of you tune in every week. Once again, you got a question, you got a comment, whatever you got, go to send me an e email at sage725 at yahoo.com. And if you send me, send me something, I'm going to send you a CD uh, as a gift and a thank you. Uh, we have about 30 seconds here. I can finish up. Uh, I want to thank my friends, the Sappenfields, uh, for their graciousness. Um, anything I can do to help you during this time, if you're in the Evergreen Oak Lawn area, if you don't have some necessities, if you're shut and you can't get to the store, if you need milk and stuff, send me, send me an email at sage725, okay, and I will help you. Uh, or you can go to my Facebook page. Just look up my name, Stephen Sage, with a PH, and you'll see, and you can send me a message on Messenger. I will help you, okay? I'll do my best to be able to get you what you need, okay? And uh, so that's what I have to say. God bless you. Thank you. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you again next week. Be blessed. Bye. Whatever happens, the very least I can do.